Good afternoon all. Time to finish the PWM5 gumstick PCB. Let's get all the remaining components on and uh, while I do that I can explain a little bit about how this back end circuit works. Um, so this afternoon I'm going to be putting these components onto the board. These three transistors which comprise the high side driver that turns a signal on the microcontroller which is varying between 0 volts and 5 volts into a signal on the gate of the uh, MOSFET here, the main switching device, um, which has a low of VBAT, the battery voltage, and a high of VGATE. So the battery voltage is nominally around 12 volts, it's probably 13. Uh, it does vary, of course, as the battery is charged and discharged. So we need to be uh, taking the gate from this around 20 volts to this around 12 volts, switching between those two levels, uh, courtesy of the microcontroller switching between zero and five. So that's what this circuitry does. Right, I've gone for a nice vertical position over the work so that I can get my head in to see what I'm doing. Uh, let's tin a few positions. Let's tin some of these uh, resistors just on one side. So there are three 220Ks and 4K7, turn that one on the bottom there. Uh, 4K7 is this one here because R6, I'll draw that on the diagram actually because um, it goes to the MOSFET gate. So let's draw that up. So let's write R6 on there because it's R6 on this PCB. Now a lot of people have said to me, why have you got a 4K7 resistor on the gate of a MOSFET because a gate doesn't require a current limiting resistor. Well this isn't a current limiting resistor. What this does in conjunction with the capacitance across gate source and gate drain this acts as a CR network so it slightly slows down. In, in effect it's a snubber because uh, we've got a resistor and a capacitor to ground and it slows down the transitions on the gate of the MOSFET and it massively decreases uh, RFI emissions, radio frequency interference emissions from this unit. And I tested this empirically. I put a potentiometer in there at first, stuck an AM radio near the circuit and just tweaked the pot until the um, transmissions on the AM band went down to virtually nothing. Now it's probably a bit larger than is actually necessary because this charge controller puts out massively less RFI than a commercial one that I've got but I just wanted the uh, smallest amount of RFI I could get away with. And um, the, of course the, the flip side of uh, having this uh, resistor here is that the switching transitions on the MOSFET are slightly slower than they would be otherwise, which raises the temperature of the MOSFET because it's working in its linear region for slightly longer. But these are tiny numbers. It's in its linear region for a very small period of time. So it doesn't get more than mildly warm. So let's place this one, which is there, tack down that end, I can't get it to go down, yikes, I won't show this shot, otherwise people are just bleat on about oh, flux, and yeah, let's have some flux, just so that I don't get uh, all those comments about flux is your friend and blah blah blah. Uh, right, let's solder that one on. I can probably solder this side now with my friend Flux and lots of it. Come on, Flux is my friend. And to other side, Flux isn't my friend on this connection. Goodness. Now, are these 224s? Uh, 220K. Yes, they are 224s. So I'll take them all out of the packaging, lay them on the board. So I'm not getting the camera too close because then I compromise my ability to see what I'm doing. And I don't want to do that. Okay, let's turn that. So all of these two. And they are on. Beautiful. Right, I've set this timeout too short and um, I now know that you can adjust the settings on here. Um, actually, I think you have to go into standby. 
press this one, that gives you the voltage and the temperature. Press it again, factory reset, press it again. So working temp 300, standby temp, sleep time, that's the one I want to adjust, so press and hold. And I can now take that up in 30 second increments. So I'll go back to 180, which I think was the standard. Wait for that to take that value. And that's pretty much it. I think it drops out of this menu itself if you just leave it. Yeah, so let's switch the thing back on and it will now sit there hot for three minutes. Right, Q1 here takes the PWM signal. So that's got to be what I've got on here is U2. So that's Q1. Um, that is a tune N3904, which is a 1am. And this thing says 1am. So that's the component. So a bit of flux is my friend is on there. Let's do that further one first. Yep, and that one. And then remake my original tack joint. Q1 is on. Right, 2N3906, the PNPs are these two. They are marked 2A. Okay, let's put this one on. Tack it on. Uh, and the other one, which I've not turned the right way up, and I probably should have done. Let's rotate that. Tack that one on. It goes there. Now I've found, actually, that the uh, JLC PCB pen works rather well as a pusher-downer. So tack it on, press it down, and remake that joint. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And I can solder the other sides. I'll probably flip this round to do that. Put a bit more flux on. There's some flux there, actually. Soak that up. Uh, so a bit of flux there, a bit of flux there. Let's solder that. Uh, okay, so four little solder joints on the legs. If I can get the bit of solder that's on my iron to point at the component. Yeah, those two capacitors in my way. That one and that one. Lovely. And the last component, um, or small component, service mount component, is this one, the 1N4148. I've got one in there. Uh, that's marked A2. Flux. Oh, that's quite a lot of flux. Flux be my friend tonight. Where's my solder gone? There it is. Okay, just soldering on the 1N4148. Didn't seem to fit terribly well on the pads. Yeah, I think the pads for that should be a little further apart, but I think she's on. Now, this circuit uh, uses a PNP here, which pulls uh, this point up to V gate when this transistor is turned on, which is when this one is turned on. That puts V gate into the uh, the gate of the MOSFET, but of course through a, a single diode volt drop. Now the thing is about a MOSFET, you really need to actively pull it high, which this does, but you also need to actively pull it low. This transistor can't do that. So this one works as a sort of passive pull down. When this transistor turns off, then this point here pulls down through this 220K and that provides a current path down through emitter base, which provides a higher current path down through emitter collector. So uh, in the absence of this uh, 3906 PMP pulling up, then this transistor pulls down, or at least it does until the gate gets to about 0.6 volts. But that's enough. Um, it then stops pulling down, but that's enough to switch the MOSFET off. So you've got an active pull up and a sort of passive active, if you like, pull down. Um, well that's it, that's all the components on apart from the MOSFET and the Transorb, the transient suppression diode. I don't really need that because there aren't going to be any transients in here while I test this. But yeah, now I want to test this, so let's get a MOSFET, solder that in, that should be relatively easy. Uh, so this one is an IRF3205. Now I haven't checked the um, pitch of this one. So that would fit over that hole. Yes, well it will, but only if I press bend the legs down right adjacent to the body 
Um, that does, in my experience, cause a little bit of cracking of the pins, but uh, in this case, just while I'm testing this, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this was never intended really to be a, well, sort of production prototype. Um, but yeah, that fits actually with the whole lining up with the MOSFET hole, so I'm going to solder that one in now. Now I've cut off the gate of the MOSFET, but the drain and source, I'm actually going to bend uh, the drain back in the direction of the drain link in case I decide subsequently I want to solder wires directly to them. But for testing this, I'm going to actually fit um, those terminal connectors, but I'll fit the ones that are actually um, pre-fitted into 2.1 millimeter sockets. So uh, this one, which is source, I've bent back in the direction of the battery positive. Uh, so I can leave those two on there. Yes, it offsets the board slightly, but I'm not too concerned about that. Right, let's fit a couple of connectors on the two ends. Uh, right, I've soldered on a couple of thick wires there to take one of these connectors. Uh, I think that's right around here, yeah, negative to that side. So I can plug in my lead acid batteries outside. Now they are um, being charged by one of these PWM5s, one of the older tarp through hole versions. So it's up to voltage. That means that this one is saying it's up to voltage and modulating the light looks like it's on all the time. So I need a different lead acid battery. I've got one down here just on the floor, a little gel one. So I'm gonna to have to rig up something to connect that to here. And then we can check the voltage of that lead, lead acid battery. Now, this was the lead acid battery, which I was using ooh, some years ago to test all of the charge controllers I made. I had a little uh, rigged up system. There's some Velcro on here, you can see, which took a little voltmeter, which sat across here. Um, but I am concerned that this battery has been left so long it might have gone to zero volts and actually uh, no longer is usable. So let's just check that with a DVM. And uh, yeah, as I suspected, that's only reading 2.2 volts. Now, whether this can be brought up uh, back to 12 volts and uh, rescued, I don't know. I suppose it's worth giving it a try. Uh, right, I've got a couple of spade terminals here, so let's put those on there. And I've got a male connector, which I can put on there with a couple of suitable bent bits of wire. And then I can plug this directly into there, so this will just sit there. Uh, actually, maybe I'll do it like that, so that lies flat on the desk. And then this will sit there, uh, showing me that voltage. Of course, it will just show it as less than 11 volts, so it'll just have a, a regular on and off flashing, 50% duty cycle. Now, of course, when I plug this thing in, um, nothing happens because there's only two volts on here, not even enough to power up the micro. Um, so I'm going to have to try and charge this thing up. Now, to act as a solar panel, I'm going to use uh, this. It doesn't work quite like a solar panel, but it's not far off. This thing is a 12 volt uh, transformer based power supply, DC. So there's a bridge rectifier and a capacitor in there, probably. Um, it puts out about 16, 17, 18 volts open circuit. In fact, let's have a look at that. Um, yeah, so that's the connector from that power supply. Um, you can see that it's, let's just flip that up. That's giving out actually 18 and a half volts. Um, now I'm going to connect it directly to that battery just temporarily to try and lift the voltage of that battery up. So I'm going to use a female to female coupler there, plug that straight in. Quite what it'll make of that, I don't know, but let's just see if that voltage is coming up. Oh. So that's gone straight to 18 and a half volts on the battery, which does look like the battery is really not putting up any resistance at all. It's kind of almost open circuit, isn't it? So mm, the likelihood of that charging is pretty limited, I think. So let's take that off. And that falls away. I suppose it's holding something. Might be worth leaving it on there for, it's down to three volts already. Yeah, not sure about that battery. Right, another one, uh, just gone out to the shed and got this. What's this one? This is a 12 volt, seven amp hour, but could well be in a similar situation because uh, this has been in the shed for years. So no idea what this is gonna give me. Let's measure the voltage first. Uh, well, that one might be a bit more hopeful. That's 9.6 volts. So let's plug in the um, that transformer-based power supply and see if that comes up. Actually, 
Where's the wire for that? That's there. Let's plug that in now and see if I can bring that up. Yeah, again, that shot up to 18 and a half. And you think that if this battery was in any sort of reasonable condition, uh, that wouldn't happen. So I think this has gone high impedance as well. But this might actually work for the purposes of what I want to do. Yeah. Oh, that's actually coming down. So that's... Is it coming down? Well, let's put the charge controller on it and try it. Right, so let's plug that in. We'll get two seconds on. And then the microcontroller is flashing the LED at regular intervals, telling me it's below 11.5 volts. Well, we know that. Right, sorry folks, emergency post bag, because I can never find these things when I want them. Yes, it's the CCTV uh, female connectors. 10 more of those. Right, let's plug the charge controller into the battery. Watch it do its low voltage flash. Now let's connect to the solar panel. It's not really a solar panel, it's that uh, transformer power supply. Into the solar panel end, and that will modulate, but it's a bit confused because there's really no um, resistance in this battery. But let's just check the voltage of it. And well, it's sort of hovering around the 13 and a half volt range, which is of course what this is looking for, but it's all over the place because this just isn't putting up a fight at all. Uh, so it does look to me like I'm gonna have to uh, replace some of my old lead acid gel batteries. Better pop down to Maplin and, uh, oh no, I can't do that because of course they've gone bust. So I've just got the power supply plugged straight into the battery again and it is creeping down in voltage, which seems counterintuitive. It seems the wrong way around. Oh, that's shooting up in voltage again now. That's interesting. So I'm just wondering whether, you know, something chemical is going on inside there and the battery might allow its voltage to come down to a more reasonable level. In other words, put up more of a sort of resistance, but I don't know. It may be uh, too late for this battery. Um, however, it does give me an opportunity to just stick these crocodile clips on my uh, probes, hook those onto the battery and spend the rest of the afternoon just sitting here watching the voltage, which is one of my favorite pastimes. Uh, right, okay, well that's it for today because uh, although the charge controller is fully built now, until I get myself a working uh, gel lead acid battery, which I'll do tomorrow, I can't do it today because it's Sunday, um, I can't really test this, but um, I'll continue with the project when I get the new battery. Cheerio.